Hey guys, Pedro here to tell you about the letters from Chelsea Grin, Suffer in Hell of November 11th on 1RPM. The album has 8 tracks, 26 minutes in length, and this is the band's 6 full length studio album. They are an American deathcore band. The design of this album is very compact in the brutality that it offers. Actually, that becomes almost the calling card of the entire record or of the experience that you will have listening to this album from start to finish. One of the reasons for that is because the album is only 26 minutes in length. So there's no room for you to breathe, for you to reset, or for you to better digest the individual tracks and see what separates them and not necessarily concentrate on what brings them together. I honestly feel like this structure works, but the album could have used maybe one or two interludes just to push the length into 30, 32 minutes so that you can better digest this record. Not that the album is hard to digest because it's not, but it would allow you to better understand the uniquenesses of each and every single song and not just look at what brings it all under one umbrella. As far as the soundscape is concerned, I ultimately enjoy the overall experience that the album gives. And I enjoy the overall production that this album offers. On one hand, you have a lot of brutality, you have a lot of heaviness, you have a lot of aggression and a lot of intensity. But on the other hand, there's a lot of melody, there's a lot of ebbs and flows, and there's also a lot of melancholy hidden into the overall design of the songs and the lyrical content and how that melody impacts your perception of the individual tracks. The way they were able to create these two worlds and merge them together, it's due to the overall production that the album has. It's an album that allows you to see both spectrums of the band and both spectrums of how this sound can really work with one another in order to create interesting dynamic songs that are very easy to digest. When you have a heavy and aggressive and brutal record and the sound quality or the overall production is not on par with what's happening behind that brutality, that brutality tends to make the waters really dirty, really murky and you can't see beyond the surface and that takes away from all the other elements that are working behind the scenes. This record allows you to do both. It allows you to see that aggression, that brutality at the top of the surface, but it also allows you to go deeper than that and see all the moving pieces that makes these songs very unique on a track by track basis. One of the elements that makes these songs unique is the orchestrations. I honestly enjoy them deeply from start to finish. And the main reason I did is because they were not the driving experience of the record of e any of these songs on this album. The orchestrations were there to create texture, to create a layer, to add a little bit of flair, to add a little bit of flavor to how these songs are coming across, in some cases to also impact the atmosphere or your perception of what the song is all about. It's a lot easier to understand the target, the message that a song has when there is a little bit of a veil that allows you to feel the song, not just listening to it. And the orchestrations on this album play that role perfectly every single time that they came into the forefront. Sometimes they're there and you don't notice them. You have to listen to the album multiple times and sometimes you feel like you're discovering something that you didn't notice before. That tells you how well placed and how well integrated they are in the overall mix. The other two elements of the sound that I really enjoyed is the drums and guitars. The drums on this album are obviously heavy and they help ground the record, but a lot of the times there also are the fuel that hits the fire that allows you to feel propelled forward as far as the brutality is concerned, but also as far as the movement goes. I enjoy this perspective, I enjoy this dynamic approach, and I overall enjoy the sound as well. It was very textured, it was very rich, it had a sense of depth. And when you have an album that is this brutal, you can't depend just on the guitar sound and on the vocal performance to create that brutality. And the, and the drums can be narrow. The drums have to be as wide as you want the songs to be. And on this record, they are just that. Now the guitar is mixing the technical side with just pure aggression works really well. I mean, it creates incredible movement within the songs, more so than from song to song. And this allows the record to feel more diverse in its approach and it also allows you to better digest that aggression i said it earlier that this is a very easy album to digest the production plays a big role in that but also this guitar experience moving from technical elements to more brutal straightforward elements 
allowing you to see the diversity of sound, the diversity of execution that they have, and then great quality as far as the overall guitar playing is concerned, really allows this album to flourish. It gives energy, it gives a little bit of a soul to the overall record. Now the vocal performance is not falling behind any of the other elements. Very interesting. Uh, I love the layers. I love how they layer the vocals quite a bit throughout this entire album. But once again, it gives it more depth without having to change too many of the attributes that they have. But they also are a catalyst for a lot of the aggression and a lot of the ebbs and flows. A lot of the momentums within the songs are defined first and foremost by the changes in the vocal range and the vocal approach. And that, uh, that almost like signifies that there's a new door opening and you're moving into a new stage of where this song is taking you. Really interesting vocal performance from start to finish. Now you can add this album to the long list of incredible deathcore albums that have been released in 2022. This is a much less chaotic album than its predecessor. I enjoy this album a lot more. Do I wish it was a little bit longer? Yes, I think it's a little bit too short. But that doesn't take anything away from the quality that it has when you compare with the previous album. Not that I didn't like the previous album, but this one feels more mature, it feels more complete, it feels better designed and definitely better executed. Now this is the first part of a double LP. The second one, Suffer in Heaven, is going to be released on March 17 of 2023. So this album, while being really interesting in terms of what it gives, it left me with a lot of questions, perhaps more than answers, in terms of how it's going to tie up with that sequel. Is it going to be a continuation? Are they both going to be two different sides of the same coin? I guess we have to wait until March 17th. But until then, you have an incredible album from Chelsea Grin to enjoy. As far as favorite songs are concerned, I want to start off with Death Bad Companion. This is a very sinister sounding track. I really enjoyed that aspect of the song first and foremost. Then it has great ebbs and flows. It's a track that doesn't stay linear. It allows you to move, to create movement. It creates movement musically and it's creating movement vocally. The vocals help define where those ebbs and flows start and where they finish. It's an important element that adds to what the sound is already creating behind it. Making the song a lot more dynamic but still very methodic and how it moves. It's not a fast moving track, it's a track that takes its time, that builds its time, but it has still dynamic movements, most of them starting and ending with that vocal performance. The orchestration on this track adds to that sinister sound, adds to that sinister vibe. This allows the song to feel more complete, but it also gives a very unique fingerprint to how you're gonna perceive, to how you're gonna digest this specific track. Next you have Flood Lungs. A uh, darker sounding song, not sinister, but darker. It's a dark track. Uh, the sound on this track is dark. The atmosphere is dark. Everything about this song comes across feeling very dark. I like the guitar sound. I like what it gives. I like that it adds to that darkness, but it also adds to the aggression. The clean vocals on this track are haunting. This is a track that sounds different from everything else on this record. It sounds different from everything that came before sounds different from everything that came after. If you're looking for a deathcore ballad, while this track, I wouldn't necessarily call it a ballad, but it pushes the envelope towards that arena. It's a mixture of a doom track with a ballad, but with a deathcore twist to it, with a Chelsea Grin DNA in it. I really enjoyed how this track moves. The dynamic that exists on the vocal performance from start to finish makes the track haunting and brutal at the exact same time. Within the same scope, not necessarily at the exact same time, but within the same scope, within the same parameters. And this gives a lot of life. It gives a lot of energy to how this track is built, to how this track is put together. The melancholy that this track offers is outstanding. There's no track on this album that sounds, feels, or it's delivered anywhere near this one. Last but not least, Morning Hymn. And this is truly a hymn. It's a hymn in terms of the sound, and it's a hymn in terms of the vocal performance. First of all, I want to say I love the guitar sound and execution from start to finish. The guitar sound on this track is really interesting. It sets itself slightly apart from everything else that you've heard. It has also great drums, and the drums help push the track forward. They're not just grounding it, they're not just creating volume, they're not just creating a, a huge footprint, they're also pushing the track 
forward, allowing the guitars to merge themselves to that heaviness, to that power, to that, to that intensity, but also break away from it and be a little bit more melodic and have a little bit more movement. The, the, the drums are the middle path. And the guitars then intersect and move away, intersect, move away. This creates movement without necessarily having to make a very chaotic sounding song all around. The orchestrations have those layers that are thin and built in, creating a veil that surrounds the whole song. But those orchestrations and some of the choirs that they use on this track are key in order to make this song become a hymn. It's definitely a hymn. The title of the track fits the experience and the sound perfectly, but those two specific elements is what makes this song jump over and become that dark hymn vibe and, or, or, and deliver it consistently from start to finish and give you that perception by the time you reach the last note. This is it. Chelsea Grin, Suffer in Hell, on November 11th on 1 RPM. Let me know your thoughts on the band, on the singles. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.